how important has this um, not week off, but week without a midweek game for the first time this season uh, allowed you to prepare for this game? Um, hopefully, very important. Um, we'll find out on Saturday, come come three o'clock. But we gave the players the, the Monday off. Um, they deserve that, not only on the back of the the ten men or the journey up to to Harrogate on the Friday, but on the back of the the, 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 the fixtures we've had so far this season and the travel involved um, and the nature of the squad. So um, we had a really good day training Tuesday, a um, bit more prep today, and then it'll be finishing touches tomorrow with a certain group who are going to be involved on the Saturday. But also we've obviously got the game tomorrow at, at Plymouth, so almost split groups today and tomorrow going into the weekend's fixtures. We'll get on to that game with Argyle shortly, but let's take a look at Saturday first against Forest Green. As we've seen, they've started this season really, really well. Four wins from their first four before losing to Port Vale last week. Yeah, very impressive start. Um, scored a lot of goals. We've we, we tried to get a handle on how they've been performing and where their strengths and weaknesses have been. Um, and, and we watched it. I think it was a Crawley game. It finished 6-3. It could, I said before, it could have been 9-6. Um, it was what, that sort of game where there was chances at either end of the pitch. Um, but obviously, they've, they've scored goals so far this season. Um, on the back of a, um, a loss to Port Vale um, and a couple of cup games in there as well. Um, but coming to us, top of the table um, and a team at the challenging at the right places within the, the league format. So certainly a team which we want to go after and we want to challenge and we want to compete against and we want to test ourselves against. Um, and we hope it's always a, a good reflection on the league when you've got two good footballing teams. Um, I think I'm right in saying that Forest Green play football the right way um, and also give young players the, the, the opportunities as well. So uh, a club we, we know pretty well, a club we seem to have played an awful lot over the last four or five years um, and a relatively local one in terms of travel for away fans. But the fact that they're top of the league just puts an extra bit of edge onto this fixture. Where is it that you see their, their biggest strengths? Well, they've, got, they've got goals in the team, um, whether it's the top end of the pitch with their, their centre forwards or, or the wing backs have been fantastic so far this season. And, and some players we, we know well have spent a little bit of time with ourselves. Um, but we've got a pack a punch ourselves um, and we've got to really threaten the opposition. We, we know when we're at our best at home, we, we play on the front foot and we get after the opposition, both in and out of possession and, and put them under pressure. Um, and we'll be looking to do the same this weekend. Um, a simple mindset and a simple approach to the game. And hopefully the players are a little bit more refreshed and have got an extra bit in terms of their legs. Um, you get to the point in the season where you're five or six games into it and you hope that the majority of the squad are fully fit to play 90 minutes. Now, we've got a couple of issues in terms of certainly the central midfield positions at the moment. But in terms of the rest of the group, they, they should be settling into the, the, the routine and the rigours of 90 minutes intense football. I think we've seen, certainly last season, the games with Forest Green, they're always closely fought encounters. Almost both sides cancel each other out. What do you think we need an extra bit of to, to get, on, get three points rather than one this time? I don't, I don't think the formations will be too dissimilar. Um, so it would be a lot of individual battles, a lot of 1v1 battles, um, a lot of movement of the ball in the right areas of the pitch to try and create space and, and goal-scoring opportunities. Um, but full credit to, the, to their start. Um, but we're looking to get ourselves going this weekend in relation to a positive result. We, we probably deserve more than what we got on the back of that, that, that performance with 10 men for such a long period at, at Harrogate and only coming away with one point. But you know, took a point at half-time going in having just conceded a penalty and gone down to 10 men. So that game could have ended totally differently. Um, but players need to start picking up, and as a club and myself, we need to start picking up wins. Um, we want to target wins and we'll certainly be doing that this weekend. In terms of injuries, how far away are some of the players that we're without at the moment? Uh, still a little bit away. Archie Collins, Josh Coley, um, training individually, but... But not far away from joining in the group this weekend is, is far too soon in relation to them. But we hope to have them within our ranks next week at some stage. Um, in, in relation to the other players, obviously Nigel's done a little bit today. Um, he's probably missed 10 days on the back of that hamstring injury picked up at Bristol Rovers. Um, Tim seems to have come through the week OK on the back of the, the niggle he had um, midway through the second half at, at Harry Gutt. Obviously Harry Kite suspended. Um, Sam Stubbs a, a, a longer term absentee um, but we certainly seem to be getting stronger but then you lose one to suspension um, but then you bring a player in as well so it seems to even itself out to a certain extent um, but we, we hope that this weekend will be as strong as we were previously and um, certainly on, on the back of Kyle's introduction to the group. We'll move on now to tomorrow's Premier League Cup game at Plymouth Argyle. Uh, Sonny Cox and Nelson Izaguan were two players that had picked up injuries are they back are they in contention for that game tomorrow? Yeah. 
they're both training. Sonny's been training for, for a longer period than Nelson, so Sonny's got a chance of being involved from, from, from the off. Um, Nelson might be able to push for the bench. Um, so it's, it's so difficult in not only in a league format, but in the cup format as well, that we can pick players in, you can play 90 minutes, but also 120 minutes if, if needed. Um, so, so Dan Green will try and get the balance in, in relation to that squad and that, and that first team selected for, for Friday's fixture. Um, and we'll try and get some minutes into some of that personnel. But it'll be a young squad as it always is. And I'm sure Plymouth will be the same. Um, but the fact that we're going to our, our local rivals um, for a local derby for a cup qualifying competition um, puts a little bit of added uh, worth to this fixture. And we know what's to come if we get through because it's six guaranteed good quality fixtures. And Plymouth will be exactly the same. Um, and it's a cup competition that has served us so well in the past few seasons, despite it was cancelled last season season before we were already in the knockout stages um, but it's great to see where we are when we compete against category one opposition um, and we like to measure ourselves because more often than not we come out on top and finally then um, obviously we didn't get to chat about this on the day so we brought in Kyle Taylor in the week what was it about Kyle that attracted you Look, I think it's a position which we know we've been targeting for a little while, even even from in the off season and at the start of pre season. Um, we knew about Kyle in relation to his performances for Southend last season and a little bit of experience the season before at Forest Green. Um, a ball player midfielder, technical player, um, something in terms of our profile of midfielders we've been missing certainly on the back of Archie's injury. Um, so someone who can hopefully balance off the rest of the the quartet or the bodies we've got in the middle of the park and obviously on the back of Kaiti's suspension and, and Nigel's injury and, and Tim's sort of body at the moment um, we felt it was the right thing to do we were going to bring a player in, in that position anyway um, but the fact that we were able to get Kyle on a, a permanent deal was a real um, really big moment for the football club because more than likely it was going to be a loan um, and then you're, you're playing to paying to develop a player for someone else really despite getting some game time with ourselves so we were delighted it could be made permanent um, because then we can invest in him and invest in his his next few seasons of his career because he's still a young lad 22 in, in May so he's got a lot of developing left in him and we see a potential there um, but first things first is to get in a team and stay in a team I think the, the deal until 2024 shows that he really is part of your, your long term plan yeah, well, I've just touched on it. It was 22 in May, so um, certainly with, with young players, we've seen it with Sam Nombe, you've got to invest for a longer period of time. Sometimes that means a bit of security for the player and, and the club itself. Um, but you're always looking at, at what's next. Like I say, he's got to come in and affect this, this team as, as early as he possibly can, and that might be sooner than he expected. It might even be this weekend. Um, but he's, he's going to be a good player for us. Um, we've got to fit him into a, a system and, a, and personnel around him which, which balances off his own game. Um, but not many times can you get a 22-year-old a from a, 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 a championship club who's played at this level already. Obviously, at South End, he's played at this level. I think, <coughs> it's, I think when you sign a player who's already got that established relationship with Timothy Dieng, I think it, that must be sort, sort of a bonus for you that you're signing a player that's already got a relationship with someone else on the side. Yeah, definitely. I mean, Tim probably played every position under the sun last season, um, centre mid, centre half, um, centre forward, number 10, out wide. Um, but he's been excellent for us so far in the middle of the park. And the fact that he's got a relationship and an understanding with Kyle already bodes well for, for having to throw them both maybe straight in together. Um, and like I said, they're two different players, two different set, set of strengths. Um, and we're really looking forward to what our our midfielders can provide now. Um, hopefully there's competition for places, obviously with Nigel and Harry Kite when he comes back from his suspension. And then not to mention Archie Collins, who's kind of been a, a solid, if not stand-up performer for us for a number of seasons. So um, competition should hopefully bring more and more in, in relation to performance. Um, but first things first, like I say, you, you always revert, revert back to what's next. And what's next is a, a tough fixture against Forest Green and whoever plays in those those midfield positions will have to compete first and foremost and then affect the game whatever way they see fit.